All right, well, I uh, guess we'll get started. I'm sure a few more people will uh, join us as we get going. So, uh, can all of you hear me? Yes, to make sure everyone's uh, good on audio? Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so uh, this lecture is going to be about uh, modern openings, uh, specifically uh, some of the uh, newer Joseki that uh, we see in a, a lot of uh, relatively common games and uh, new variations to those joseki early on in the game, in the opening, and uh, what they mean for your games. So there's a lot of really interesting moves that have uh, come about in the last, well, I mean, you could even say in the last few years, but uh, <laughs> but uh, even in the last, uh, you know, six or seven years, they've had a huge amount of research go into these uh, new variations. So the starting situations, some many of you may be uh, familiar with, but uh, the variations that uh, come out from them I think uh, <clears throat> maybe no. So let's get started. So, <laughs> so uh, this is just a pretty basic opening, and I'm sure, although this is not the the most common pincer these days, I'm sure many of you have uh, seen it before. So what's uh, what's the most common response here as black? Any ideas? Most common response for black. What do we have? Uh, C17, <clears throat> F15. Uh, Tarun, uh, wait for uh, wait for the some of the Q players to take a to take a guess first, but then uh, after that you're more than welcome. F16. <laughs> all interesting choices. So uh, yeah, all of well. So the thing about A. A actually, what usually happens is black usually jumps first with the idea of playing A right after. That's more of a move order thing than anything else. But uh, this is uh, likely what many of you had on your minds when uh, you suggested your moves. And uh, this is a little bit trickier. Who here knows what black does next? In general, the, the, the most common variant for black to do here. Well, you probably do, Taran. But, <laughs> I mean, our, our Q players. Yes, C13, which is the first move, but then the question is, what now? <laughs> what is the move now? I know you got it. <laughs> we have B13, C14, D12. Ah, good. So C is actually the right move. The crock cut here. And this is a pretty common variant, actually. This is rather old. And a lot of things can happen here, uh, depending on uh, what white wants to do. One possible variation for white is to play like so. And basically give black this and then either do some sort of extension or <clears throat> something along these lines. And, and this is one of the older variants. But uh, in recent, in the last six or seven years, there's been a, a few other interesting moves that people have tried. So I'm sure with, uh, with this, <clears throat> we're all very familiar, or at least most of us are familiar, with uh, G16, which is a very common move. And uh, we're actually going to talk about some new G16 variations later. But uh, actually, the new experimentation, and by new I mean six or seven years, has been actually playing g16 in this situation, which is pretty interesting. So the question now is, uh, what should white do? Can, can he just do the same variations that he does with uh, white at d12, or is there new stuff? Right, right, with d12 it's very common, absolutely. Almost everyone is aware of uh, <clears throat> Once most people reach a certain strength, they see it very often with d12. But with d13, it becomes a bit different. So anyone have any ideas about what you should do here? Just the same thing, something different? Well, there's a lot of things to cut, though. Which cut? So let's see, we have e16, e15, d16, oh, good. F15. Ooh, F15 is a really fun one. Actually, F15, I think, is more commonly done 
when white has a stone at uh, d12. But uh, yeah, I, I guess I can't say it's inherently wrong. All right, so let's take a look at some of these moves. So this move might be tempting, but uh, in general, this uh, probably isn't ideal for white, especially because black has the ladder. The problem is when you hit this situation, if white attempts to cut, white's in a bit of a quandary. You know, if white attempts to go really aggressive, this probably isn't going to be too pleasant for uh, white to deal with. So, probably problematic, or actually you can even do it this way. And this just seems very difficult for white to manage properly. If uh, white attempts to do something like this, what can black do here? What can black do now? Yep, double honey. Double honey is a very, very powerful move here. And uh, we can get into a whole lecture, actually, about uh, when you can double honey. But uh, the main point being is that here, it doesn't end too well for white. The problem being for white is that black has the ladder, or black has k16. And white has no way to uh, really win this fight. I mean, technically speaking, maybe white can connect underneath. But no one can say ever that this is a, a favorable result for white, or, or anything that's even close to good enough. Yes, yes I did. Well, yeah, if he absolutely had to, but uh, we'll get into a whole, uh, whole lecture on uh, this uh, particular fighting technique. The main point is that this is not good for white. So usually we can't do A, but uh, there are a few other moves that are interesting. So let's take a look at uh, B. B is the one that most immediately comes to mind, because uh, it's the move that's done with the two-space high pincer. But the question becomes, well, black plays the same way, and now what does white do? Yeah, well, let, let's see what happens. What if white does the same thing? You know, white expects black right now. <clears throat> white expects black to play this if it's the Joseki when, uh, when white has a stone out here. But uh, this isn't as good for black here. Actually what black is supposed to do here is just this move. And because, uh, because d13 is closer, this is a lot of damage to uh, d13. And white's shape up top is still kind of awkward. I mean white really needs a, a, some kind of shape move here. And black can in all likelihood get to one additional forcing move, and a forcing move under, and uh, no one can say that black is uh, really sad about this kind of result. G16 still has a fair amount of Aji. But the main point is that this is uh, not ideal for white. So white has a few other choices. <clears throat> uh, did anyone else uh, give an idea? What else should uh, white consider doing? E16. Hmm. I think black would probably just do the same thing. It seems difficult for white. Yeah, I don't think this is very good for white. So yeah, crosscut is the only other move that occurs. Yeah. This is really the only thing white can do. And from here, actually, there's a number of variations. So black almost 100% has to play here. And there's nothing really else that black can do. If white does this move, black will capture. <clears throat> white will uh, Atari here. And if black wants to, he can uh, he can play e17 if he wants. Um, this is kind of an optional continuation. At uh, at this point, locally speaking, uh, black is considered slightly better. At this point, so if this happens in your game you can, in general, be satisfied as black. So white really look, tries to look for other moves, because that's a little bit better for black. So the other move the white has, and really the proper one, is to just jump out. 
But this move is very ladder dependent. If white has the ladder, white can do this, and black collapses. <laughs> Zero space jump. Yeah, if white does the if uh, the ladder is okay for white, you know, in other words, if black cannot ladder white's two three stones like this, then black really cannot end well here. So if white does have the ladder, black actually needs to play here. And this is usually the result. And this is actually considered a bit better for white. Uh, black's corner isn't tiny, and white still has a little bit of Aji, but uh, re regardless, white has uh, relatively good thickness going out. <coughs> I'm sorry, white has relatively good thickness going out on both sides. So it's hard to say that uh, black is really favorable here. White is uh, white's doing fine for himself. I guess would be the proper thing. Now, there's a... what was I going to say? Alright, so that one's usually favorable for white. Which is uh, generally problematic for black. So black has to be very cautious in uh, how he plays these moves. So basically when black plays uh, g16 in the first place, he needs to be sure that white does not have the ladder. He needs to be absolutely positive. Then he can play like this, if black is to do this. One thing to uh, definitely keep in mind. So there are some other moves that we should look at, though. Uh, E15 is one of them. The other one is actually D16, which might look a little uh, strange, I guess, to some of you that aren't very familiar with it. But it's a, it's a pretty powerful move, if you play it correctly. Now, I'm sure some of you are familiar with doing this in this situation. <clears throat> in this situation, d16 is almost kind of like a, a semi-trick play move, I guess. It, uh, it depends how you play it out. But it's, uh, it's different when white has his stone a bit closer. The variations are a lot... Yeah, semi-headache. A lot different. So if black attempts to do something like this, this is difficult for black to make work. Um, once white does this, it seems very difficult for me, for black to really get a good result out of this. Black's two stones are kind of split in half, and white's two groups aren't, or black's two groups aren't particularly strong. So usually black doesn't do that. The the uh, I guess the intuitive move that we might think black play is uh, e15. Which he could, in fairness, certainly consider. Um, what happens is actually the same thing. White Han is, and then cuts. And now this is a move that uh, is very, very complicated, and you really have to know what you're doing to play this properly. So let's uh, take some guesses first. Any ideas? What should black do here? White's shape clearly has weaknesses. But how do we use those weaknesses? What would we do to use them? One idea to C16, idea for C13. Anyone else want to take a shot? B14. Ah. All right, three interesting moves. Sure, we can take a look at all three. So. This is uh, probably one of the first moves that occurs to most people. And it looks pretty good. But the problem with it is this will happen. And white can just do this. And then jump out. And the problem here is that black is in a fair amount of danger. Uh, I guess you could say black is uh, basically dead. And white's going to win this fight. So it doesn't really work that well. So let's see, this move, <clears throat> and this is an interesting move, but I guess my problem with it is that uh, I think white can just do this, and it seems difficult for black to uh, make it work. Because if black, even if black tries this move, 
white can just jump here. And if black defends, white can cut. So it seems uh, difficult for black to make this work. Of course, if black extends, then they can have a fight. And it's a tricky fight. But uh, black has two groups to worry about. <clears throat> Whereas white has only one. So uh, I would call this favorable for white. Actually, the correct move for black is this one. Lo and behold. This is uh, really the only way that black has to play. And white's move is actually, a, well, you know, the, the one that might occur to people is uh, b60. And normally in this shape, b16 is correct. But uh, as we're going to see, the, the best move for white <clears throat> is actually c16. Now, black really has uh, one move he can play. Yes, empty triangle. Well, yeah, it's an empty triangle. But uh, it works. And so black jumps out. And now it's white's turn. And the question is, what does white do? This is actually a tesogy. That's a big hint. <clears throat> ah, the nose hit. Bingo. Yeah, this is a <clears throat> this is a very sharp, severe move. And if black doesn't have a ready uh, response ready for it, then it can be uh, very painful. The key to remember here is that uh, white gets this move in sente. Black has to respond. <clears throat> so that has to be kept in mind when considering this fight. <clears throat> so if black attempts to do this, it uh, doesn't end very well for him. White will generally just push twice and then slice through. And now black stones just look silly. They're basically not doing anything. So black can't play this way. So the other choice for black is to uh, run down, which he can do, but uh, he has to be very careful with it. So white can start to chase and continue his chasing. And this is the critical point. It's very, very tempting to play this move as black, but uh, black cannot play this move. Because after white does this, black really has nothing. Nothing that he can do to uh, win this fight. <clears throat> white is he's just dead. Yes. Now, why is this solid shape so important? Well, what if we had done the normal hanging connection? Now it's a very different situation. Suddenly, black can do this, <clears throat> and it turns into a gigantic co. <clears throat> so yeah, the solid shape had a, a very specific purpose, namely stopping this co from happening. So what, what black has to do instead is uh, jump out. Let white connect under and then turn here. And now what we have is something close to an even fight. Uh, who's better here really depends on what's going on on the whole board. <clears throat> you know, does white have strength in the center? How strong is the F-17 group? Uh, a lot of questions. But uh, yeah, this is, a, this is what you could expect as a relatively even fight on an open board. Oh yeah, the uh, at least that old game. Um, which one was that? I will get back to you on that one. Uh, which one happened in that game escapes me. But uh, yeah, uh, quite a number of professionals have taken an interest in this one in a few of their games in the last few years. <clears throat> so those are uh, the basic variations for uh, this Joseki. Uh, let's go on to the second one. Let's see, where was I? Ah, here. So 
So this is a somewhat common opening. Black slides into b4, and white tanukis, which is actually very common in modern Go. Responding immediately is uh, not exactly bad, but uh, sometimes it's considered old-fashioned, <clears throat> especially if there's a really, really big move on the board. So white tanukis, and black does the one-space low pincer, which, uh, along with the two-space high pincer, are the two most common pincers that you'll find. Now, white has a variety of responses that we could talk about here, but uh, what we're going to really focus on is this move. And in particular, this situation. And so the question is, what is uh, what are black's normal moves here? Any ideas? G17. Oh, good, we're familiar with this one. Yes, it's black's moves here. Let's see, we have uh, F17, D16, <laughs> Tanuki. Yeah, old, really old is E18, is the oldest. Let's take a look at these. So this move usually is not the right move that uh, black wants to do. The problem here is that black is just really making white stronger and uh, not really giving himself uh, that much of a benefit <clears throat> to do it. There's a lot of things the white could do. Um, the simplest move, of course, the white could play is this. And uh, black really hasn't gotten that much of a benefit yet from doing this. <clears throat> All black has really done is make this stone weaker. So yeah, usually we don't want to do that. Um, ah, this move. <clears throat> uh, F17 is kind of a special purpose move. It's not really a straight up Joseki move, I don't think. <clears throat> it's a move where black is very scared of uh, white attacking his shape. But uh, not really a normal Joseki move, I don't think. I could be mistaken, but I'm not, I'm not familiar with it. No, the most common modern move is uh, G17. But what I see again and again is uh, players messing up what to do now. <clears throat> or at least playing uh, the old-fashioned variations that uh, aren't as good. So now the question is, and the real question, what are white's moves now? Oh, can black E16 like this? No. Black should not attempt to do this. White will probably just respond, and this stone becomes a lot weaker. Plus, black's shape is still flawed. So, what did you guys say about this situation? Ah, F16, E18. B18. C11. E17. Wow, lots of choices. Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at some of these. Isn't E13. Ah, another choice. We can definitely take a look at these. So this move usually is not correct. Uh, what usually will happen is uh, black will just play here, and then this happens. And then white's kind of at a loss for what to do next. Um, I mean, black is a bit lower maybe, but uh, his shape is a lot stronger. Any weakness that black's shape once had is gone. If white attempts to do this, black has a great counter. 
<laughs> black has a powerful counter on the double honey here. So this is not really good for white. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, d15 looks really silly. So not usually the uh, ideal move. Um, this move, I don't think this move should be done yet. There may be reason for this move later on, but my problem is that uh, it seems that black will just do this. And now black's shape is perfect. Whereas white's shape <clears throat> still has a flaw in it. So let's see, uh, what other moves do we have? Ah, C11. So C11 isn't a bad idea, but the problem is that white is still too weak. <clears throat> Black jumps like this, and uh, white is really left with two weak groups now. This is uh, not an easy fight for white. I would not recommend doing this. Uh, let's see, what else? Ah, so B18 is a possibility. This is a one continuation, but uh, this actually is, in modern times, this is actually considered not good enough for white, depending on the board situation. If white controls the upper right, then white can play this way. Because what white really wants is to play uh, J17. <clears throat> white really wants to play J17 next. But uh, if J17 is just going to get attacked itself, then uh, this probably isn't good enough for white. So only play this when you control the upper right corner. Uh, let's see. Ah, good. So this move is actually the move that we're really going to focus on. Uh, in a number of recent games, this has been a, a pretty common move. <clears throat> As you note that this is a move, uh, another move that requires the ladder. You, you have to have the ladder to play this move, as uh, we'll talk about in a second. <clears throat> actually, the old-fashioned move that players used to do is this one. But uh, the reason why they stopped <clears throat> was because of what happened next. Uh, black would usually play something along these lines. Could white tanuki here? You mean here could white tanuki? Or do you mean here? Ah, oh, um, I don't think I would recommend that. <laughs> this is a very dangerous way for white to play. Um, if they try to play at a normal variation, the problem is that white ends in gote. And also white, to, well, white really should have the ladder to do this. But then black gets this, and white has a ladder to worry about, as well as a weak group. So white really can't do this at this time. Locally, eight, c8 is a playable move, but uh, the situation in the upper left is pretty critical. <clears throat> so the old-fashioned way of doing it was uh, something along these lines. But the problem for white... Well, let's see. This may look a bit fancy, but I'm sure some of you are familiar with this. This used to be very common. But the problem now, <clears throat> but the problem now is uh, E14. Why whites kill? Why not whites kill? And the problem is that E14 is a pretty silly move right now. Oh, this move? I don't understand. Hmm. 
instead of killing the stone, do what? What should white do now? Oh. Okay. Oh, now you want white to play f17. Um, no. No, don't do that. A uh, few problems with this. The main one is this. Yeah, black is pretty happy with getting this result. White might get his eye a little bit easier, but it's really not worth it. But good question. Very good question. So, this fell out of favor. Because white's shape is a bit awkward afterwards. So this move uh, basically replaced it. If we do the same thing, if black responds the same way, I should say. This is actually considered pretty even. <clears throat> With it one further away, e13 is actually, you know, it's a fairly decent move. It's in the general area of what white would like to be doing. So white's shape is maybe a little bit over-concentrated, but... Uh, Black stones are kind of thin. And black's corner isn't really safe yet. <clears throat> you know, later on in the game, well, white can do this. And uh, turns black's corner into basically nothing. <clears throat> so uh, this is uh, generally considered Joseki. But black has a lot more violent responses than uh, this very nice one. And, and that's really what we're going to be focusing on. So one of the not nice things that black can consider doing is this move. <clears throat> and this is where all the, the aggressiveness comes out. A lot of things can happen here. And uh, really shapes the whole rest of the game. So if uh, white uh, kindly pulls back for black, black is thrilled. <clears throat> Because now, if white attempts to do this, suddenly white's shape is uh, a little less, uh, a little worse. <clears throat> if we notice this exchange here, A for B, <clears throat> we can clearly see this was, uh, in this shape, not a good exchange. Had black attempted to play A here, where would white respond? What would white do? Assuming white responded locally. Assuming white responded locally, Rukas. Yes, e12. All right, if white was going to respond locally, e12 would be the move here. So, well, white's actually inefficient here. White does not want that to happen. So, because of that, white basically has uh, one move. And that is e12, but uh, this can be a whole bag of nasty if you're not careful. Black's general response is to cut. If black attempts to play this, white is happy. Oops. White is uh, happy to get this result out of him. And now suddenly this exchange has become bad for black. White gets a lot of severe attacks against uh, black stones. <clears throat> One possibility for white here, for example, is this move. Black cannot be uh, particularly thrilled with this prospect. It's a powerful splitting attack. So black will generally try and cut. And uh, if white attempts to go all out to attempt to kill it, uh, that doesn't work very well. Or, or should I say, I'm sorry, if black attempts to go all out to kill it, it doesn't work very well. Black's in a lot of danger. Mainly because of this. 
And uh, black is not happy. No. So instead of that, oops, lost my place. Hello? Oh, sorry, connection lost for a second. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> so instead of that, uh, one idea that black can do is uh, just responding here. And if white continues to attack, black can jump out. This is actually considered a little bit favorable for white. Um, black connects up his stones but uh, why does a lot of interesting moves in the future? It looks like it might be okay for black, but uh, one of the big problems for black's shape here is a really fancy cut that white has. Oops. <clears throat> well, more like a fancy cut. This is one of the reasons why it's not good enough for black is that uh, white has a very dangerous cut here. And if black attempts to protect it, white is generally pretty happy. To play like so. Yeah, this is not pleasant for black. Black cannot be happy with uh, this kind of result. <laughs> yeah. So the basic idea for black is either to uh, uh, this or this. Something along these lines. E18 variation. Oh, um, usually white does not play E18 first. Usually white plays a uh, with a really fun sacrifice. Which really fun sacrifice? In general, white doesn't do it first, but uh huh. Oh, I know the variation you're talking about. You're talking about uh, the one where the black does this. No? Huh. Which move? D13. Oh, D13. This is a whole new, uh, <laughs> this is a whole new bag of tricks. Uh, we're gonna take a look. We're focusing on, uh, E13 at the moment. We can go to D13 afterwards. D13 is a, a whole fun thing. <clears throat> but, uh, the key point here is this move can only be done when, uh, the ladder is good. The reason being, is this ladder. White has to have uh, this ladder in case black tries to counterattack. If uh, white does not have this ladder, then this everything collapses basically. And this just becomes horrible. So, to uh, answer your question, what happens, when, what if white doesn't have the ladder, and you're in this situation? Well, then D13 comes in. And this is actually going to be probably the last, uh, <clears throat> the last variation we look at for the evening. Or should I say set of variations. This move is a, a somewhat modern move. This is when white does not have the ladder. White generally plays this way. And I want everyone to make sure they stay focused <clears throat> on uh, S15. That same move we were looking at, and how N16 changes it. <clears throat> so let's take a look. Well, black will generally respond. Yes, I look very well needed. And now white has a number of choices. <clears throat> 
what white will usually do here is play s15. And black has two responses. <laughs> um, if you know all of them, then don't. But, uh, yeah, feel free. <clears throat> do you really know all of these stuff already? If you know all of them already, then uh, please don't. So there are really two choices here. All right, then uh, take a shot. So one variation is a, basically a trade. This trade is basically considered a little bit better for white. Even though black gets a panuki, white's shape is pretty strong. Uh, <clears throat> R13 doesn't look very useful. And white's corner is nice. Or at least acceptable. So this is considered a little bit better for white. So usually black will attempt to do this. Well, of course, it always depends on the local stones. So usually black will attempt to do this. And now we have an interesting situation. So let's see what uh, what has N16 done for us. I wonder. Well, white can't capture the stone. The stone can't be captured. <clears throat> but there's a really long, really fascinating sequence here. Um, to be very blunt, uh, it's uh, it would take a really, really, really long time to uh, explain each and every move. So we're going to move a little bit quickly. But uh, the, the general idea is that we use a, a net sacrifice. Yes. <clears throat> we use the net to make a sacrifice. White captures. And, or black captures, and then white cuts here. Oh, good. And this becomes kind of interesting. Uh, black plays O17, and white actually Atari's here, <clears throat> and then plays a uh, L18, and most of these moves are forced. Atari, Atari. This is a cool response. The idea here is to uh, build up strong shape <clears throat> for white, rather than just respond here. This depends on the ladder. You know, if white attempts to do this, and white doesn't have a ladder, this won't end very well. In comparison, this move stops black from escaping and doesn't require the ladder. So black then uh, works to connect under. White gets some forcing moves. White gets himself free capture. Black captures the stone. Black captures the corner. And then white usually will play this move. And in the opening, yeah, as, uh, as it says in the opening, this is usually a bit better for white. But depending on the whole board situation, you know, black's corner is nice. So depending on the whole board situation, this can uh, sometimes be better for black. For example, if white was already strong, oops, if uh, white already had a strong corner here, this is not good for white. Definitely superior for black. On the other hand, if uh, white managed to uh, build a giant top formation, it's uh, very different. So yeah, this is a really interesting one. But uh, actually, there's a lot more variations than just this one. One second of uh, finding my place. This is the problem. When you make a SGF file that's too big, <laughs> you lose where you are. Uh, where was I? Right. So uh, there's this move. Uh, what sometimes can be found, actually, rather than this, is uh, black actually tanuki <clears throat> to either defend here or something similar to this move. In which case, white will usually defend, or sometimes capture, and they'll basically trade. <clears throat> 
This is usually better for white. Black should really not do this. If black is going to do this, then he basically should never have played n17. So you should not usually play this one in your games. And then there was one more. Oh, All right, bad moves. Bad moves not to do. Don't do this move. Please don't. It, it just doesn't end well. It looks at first glance like it might be good, but the problem with it is that White's is getting Atari, and then Atari, and then Fix, and then Fix. And White is not happy at all with this result. So, yeah, don't crosscut if you're white. And there's some other interesting things that uh, black can do in uh, the original situation that we looked at. In this one, we always concentrated on this move, but uh, black has another move actually. This move. Uh, this move gets very interesting, and a lot of players don't know how to respond to it. But it's uh, it's very important to know how. Oh, wait, I messed up the move order. Uh, one second. One second, trying to figure out where I missed my move order. Let me go back to the other one. Always mess up the move order. I gotta make smaller SGFs. This is killing me. <laughs> Alright, here we are. <clears throat> Darn it. This is what happens uh, when you get older. Your memory just starts slipping, and uh, the variations you're going to play start to uh, slip away. <laughs> what one was I going to show? Jeez, now I can't even remember it. It's pitiful. Pitiful. All right, all of you, wait one moment. I made notes for this lecture somewhere. Sorry to keep you all waiting. I normally don't forget these like this. Very unusual. Ah, found it. Sorry. I, I didn't finish up this. This is what I was complaining about. Right, right, right. So here, we just talked about this move, but uh, and the result that comes from this. So this is the one we just talked about. But there's another thing actually. Black can actually consider doing this move, which is uh, very important to know. So black cuts here, and the question is, what does white do about it? Any ideas? Ah, Atari. C14. B15. Any other ideas? Just uh, C14 and B15? Well, we're just talking about, you know, generally playable and good moves. Some moves are just bad no matter what the situation is. Alright, these are two good moves to look at. So, let's first look at the first one. 
if white attempts to just uh, defend solidly, uh, black can also defend solidly. And then white plays out here. And uh, at first glance, it looks like this might be okay for white. But uh, the problem is that black's shape has some problems. So for example, if black peeps, and then does something like this, uh, suddenly rather than blacks, you know, or suddenly rather than white's moyo, it suddenly starts to look like white has uh, two weak groups. Yeah, not a particularly useful wall. Of course, if uh, white attempts to do something closer, black will basically just give it to him and let white be really, really over-concentrated. This is not good enough for white at all. So, white usually doesn't play that way. If white does this, it doesn't really do much to black. And black just responds black here, and now white has some shape problems. And even if white fixes his shape problems, black is still thrilled. <clears throat> yeah, white cannot do this. This is not good at all for white. So, really the only thing remaining to us is this move. And there's two things black can really do here. The first thing black can do is uh, this move. And at first glance it looks like we can find a really cool test achieve. You know, at first glance this looks like an awesome move. Or at least what you do after it looks awesome. Because white can connect underneath. But this isn't very good for white actually. Because after black plays this, Although white is still in the corner, black's pretty thick outside, and the e13 stones just look stupid. So this is not good enough for white. Mm, definitely not good enough. <laughs> yeah, even if white captures, it's not good enough because black can just tanuki. <clears throat> you know, the the e14 point isn't a cut. He's not a cut because black can just capture back. So really, if black wants to be safe, he can just do this. Now black's wall is incredibly thick, and white's corner just isn't that big, not big enough to justify it. So what white actually has to do is this move, and then hit black here. And the old way of playing is for black to kill the corner, which is his right, and then white to finish up like this, or sometimes like this. <clears throat> And this is actually considered an even result. On this kind of board position, uh, professional players in general consider this to be a 50-50 result. Even though black gets more points. L let's look at it. <clears throat> First off, how many points, just solid points on the top, would you say that this is given white? Anyone want to take a shot? How many solid points? can we say white has on the top? One guess at 15. Anyone else want to take a shot? 10. Another 10. 0. 8. Yeah, 10 is a pretty good guess. Um, we can't say exactly yet, of course, but uh, 10 points is a pretty good estimate for what white has on the top. No, no, I mean, how many points does it look like white will have at the end of the game? <clears throat> at the very minimum, he will have uh, these eight. And, uh, you know, maybe he'll have nine... 8 and 9, J19 and H17 are, you know, maybe moves. So we, we can call it between 8 and 10 points. We're, we're talking absolute solid points here. Not maybe what White could make, but just absolute solid conservative guess. Now wait. Now let's, uh... <laughs> now let's look at Black's corner. Who can tell me uh, how many points is Black's upper left? 
White has, you know, maybe 10 points. What, what does black have? Yeah, very good. 20 is a pretty good estimate. Eh, maybe one or two more. 20 to 22, we could say. <clears throat> Don't forget, white has a little bit of a reduction. Uh, what white can do later on, white can do this, and then this move. And then also white has at least one forcing move here, or potentially an invasion here. So white has a, a few little things he can do. But still, 20 to 22 points is good. So black could do that, if black wanted. <clears throat> but uh, the main point we have to see is white has maybe 10 points and black has 20. <clears throat> so it looks like black gets uh, 10 points better. But the question is, well, what else does white get? And the answer to that is a modest amount of thickness. <clears throat> this, of course, is not solid points yet. So we, we can't directly count it as points. But what we can do is we can match it up against the 10-point difference. Black gets 10 more points of solid territory here. <clears throat> and so the question we have to ask is, will this thickness either A, grant white another 10 points by the end of the game, or B, reduce black by another 10 points by the end of the game, or C, do a combination of the two to make at least 10 points? And the uh, professional analysis is that in general it's uh, about 50-50 that white's wall will be worth about 10 points. Whether reducing or gaining or just something along those lines, uh, of course it totally depends on what's going on on the rest of the board. But in this board position, it's pretty 50-50. Black gets a few more points, white gets some points plus thickness, to trade. But if black wants, he can actually be a little more aggressive. Rather than killing off the corner, he can try and uh, <clears throat> destroy all of white's points here. So what should white do if uh, black doesn't move like this? Any ideas? H15 from 2. Anyone else want to take a shot or is this just the unanimous move? Ah, and also the cross cut. Ah, two votes for crosscut, two votes for h15. Let's see. So first off, the crosscut. Well, the crosscut here isn't actually that good. The problem I have with the crosscut is... is black can get these Ataris off. And white can capture the one stone. But uh, this result's a lot worse for white than the other result we looked at. Oops. If we uh, compare this and the other one, you know, in comparison, white has fewer points, and black has this new wall. Now, maybe it's not a perfect wall yet, but uh, it's certainly worth something for black. So, white is definitely not happy here. So, the only, re only response for white is to actually Atari outside. Or, or, I'm sorry, to Hane outside. And then white can push a few times and then live in the corner. And this is one playable variant for black. This is very different, of course, than the other way. This is black focusing on the top rather than killing the corner. And from here we have uh, the two basic continuations being move around here, and move around here. And this is pretty much Mii. Whichever one black defends against, white will almost immediately take the other one. Because they're both just so important. <clears throat> so this is the other primary variant, in this case. And then uh, last one of the night. When this happens, rather than uh, extending outward, White has another move, actually. White can actually do that, or black can actually do this. <clears throat> In 
instead. And White's response is generally to do this. If White uh, captures directly, it doesn't really look good for White. And this will not end well for White. Even if White somehow manages to Hane here and live, you know, even if Black just plays very, very, very passively, I just can't see this as being that good for White. And this is Black playing as passive as humanly possible. Still not good enough for White. So White has to play here. If Black attempts to uh, kill the stones, it doesn't really work out that well. Because Black needs to protect these two stones. And then White gets a pretty good result. So only move for Black to play is this one. Only move for White to play is this one. And it's really tempting for Black to want to do this move. But he can't, because White has this move. So Black actually has to play a B18 right now. And then White in response has no choice but to play F15. <clears throat> and now we have an interesting situation. It's Black's turn, and Black needs to do something. So what should Black do? Any ideas? K16 J16 L17 Everyone seems to have uh, this general idea. Yeah, this is a this is a definitely the right idea. Absolutely. So the most common move here is actually L17. The idea being treat G17 uh, lightly. <clears throat> this move focuses more on developing R16 rather than directly saving uh, G17. If Black attempts a move like this. This high move is a, is a development move, but the problem is white is so thick. So how should white counter if black does this? Any ideas? What's, what, what's white's response? Yep, bingo. White just does this. And, or yeah, or the high one actually. You, you could also play the high one, L16. But the main point being, there's no way for black to make this uh, work really well for himself. Black just won't be very happy no matter what happens in this case. So black would do well to treat uh, G17 lightly. But now white has a really interesting thing he can do. White can actually cut here. And I'll, you know, black can capture it, but uh, if black attempts to go all out to capture, this does not work for black. Because white has this move. And then really white can just do this. And after this, black basically cries to himself and resigns. Really not much else to say for black. <laughs> yeah, it's a key. Or a dumpling. So black can't play this way. Actually, black has to do this. And then uh, a really, 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 I, I could say really a few more times. But the point is a really big co-starts. First white gains some liberties. And black has to capture. And then white has a tesogy to make the corner a co. Who can tell me? What's the test of G? Yeah, 18. Bingo. And thus, a really large co begins. And so this is considered one of the, the more even results. Now, of course, it depends who has more co-threats. You know, what's going on on the rest of the board? It's a complex uh, multi-step co.
So L17 is possible, but uh, Black has to be aware of that Ko. And Black has to be willing to fight that Ko if Black is going to do L17. If you don't want to do the Ko, <clears throat> what do you have to do? What should Black play if Black wants to avoid that Ko? See one uh, one vote for e eleven. One vote for c nine. <clears throat> Two moves with the general idea. So uh, c nine looks like a good move, and it's not necessarily a bad move. But the problem is, white gets a free forcing move. And black has to respond to it, and, and that's good for white. Now, C, now C9 looks a little awkward. So not the ideal shape. This is a really interesting move, actually. <clears throat> um, you should only play E11 here if you are really, really willing to fight. Because white can uh, just go for the double hane. And a lot of complex things can happen now. Basically, it depends what's going on on the rest of the board. You know, who's going to win this fight? If stones get cut, then what will happen to them? Uh, yeah. Difficult to say who will end up better. <clears throat> well, suffice to say, it's uh, complicated. But the simple move for black, and I guess you could say the more standard one, is d10. <clears throat> and then white finishes up with k16. And generally speaking, this is considered to be Joseki. If uh, black attempts to immediately approach here, <laughs> if black immediately approaches here, white can generally just play uh, like so. If black attempts to slide in, white can start a fight and separate the corner, which is really nice. On the flip side, if uh, black comes back to defend, white can do this. And white's starting to make himself some territory. There's still a bit of Aji in the lower left, around the uh, C7 area. <clears throat> and the game continues. So this move can be uh, pretty scary if you're not ready for it, but uh, the key to remember is uh, how to deal with C15. You have to play this move. B15 is the only thing that white can do here. Uh, E15 just generally doesn't work. It is a very, very rare day <clears throat> when uh, E15 is the proper move. So, uh, my voice is starting to die on me again. And uh, that's about all the time we have for it. So, I hope you enjoyed. We, we didn't go over that many different moves, but I think we went into a fair amount of depth into the moves that we did go over. So, you know, the main point of this lecture is that uh, <clears throat> there are constantly new moves, new variations being looked into. Uh, these variations themselves are actually five years old or so. <laughs> so, there's probably a lot of new variations to each of them that I don't know of. But uh, I went over the ones that I'm more familiar with. So that being said, I hope you enjoyed this lecture. I hope to see you all next week, and hopefully my voice will be a bit better then. So until next time.